Okay, this video is again from the book uh, Poor Man's Way to Prevent Dementia. And now we're on chapter 15. We're going to talk about um, other toxins in food and um, sometimes in air pollution and whatnot. Just a couple of them. And just because, you know, being healthy, part of it is to avoid all these toxins as best you can. They sort of all add up. People's health's being nickel and dimed. Okay, so here's a chemical structure of aluminum. And uh, aluminum is very toxic. It has no purpose at all in the human body. And it's much more common than people think it is because it's put in the drinking water as a clarifier. It binds a bunch of other chemicals and paradoxically it makes the water look more clear. So that's why it's in all the water. All right, that's, why you, that's another reason why you want a water filter. It's very common too that it gets into food. A lot of people cook on aluminum. Um, it's also, you know, they often will wrap their food in aluminum. I won't allow anybody to wrap my food in aluminum. You know, like I went to this um, fast food place, not a fast food place, submarine place, something like that with my kids many years ago. And I told them to put it in the wax paper and they didn't. They put it in aluminum. So I, I returned the sandwich. I said, no, I wanted to put it in wax paper. I won't take that one. And my kids were all embarrassed. And the reason I just say that is because you know, you have to like hold up to your principles on these things. Otherwise, you get nickel and dimed over time and it weakens you. Um, and aluminum is also what is being put into the air. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about with the trails, um, it's the, it starts with chem. Uh, so anyways, you want to avoid all that as best you can. It's good to have an air filter in your house, like a HEPA air filter. But, you know, I don't know how great they are for, for removing uh, this stuff from the trails because uh, you know they might be in, in a nano uh, particle size but still you do the best you can um, and simply being aware of it you can partially avoid these things I'll talk some more about uh, where you encounter this oh yeah other things where you're gonna find it it's in um, anti-caking salt it's in a lot of baking powder it's in the inner surface of cans uh, soda pop um, it's transdermally absorbed from deodorants. You don't need deodorants. Nobody, nobody, um, uh, you know, smells your armpits when you walk into a room. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, it's a metalloestrogen. It activates estrogen receptors, increases the risk of breast cancer, especially if a person shaves before they put deodorant on because the lymphatics between the armpit and the uh, upper outer quadrant are shared. Um, I think it contributes, uh, as far as I can tell, significantly to lowering the IQ of the population. Um, it's a major neurotoxin. Um, it is found in beta amyloid plaques that are extracellular, and it's also found in neurofibrillary tangles that are intracellular primarily associated with uh, so-called Alzheimer's disease. Let's just call it dementia. It'll form complexes with fluoride ions. And um, here, let me get out of the way a little bit. With fluoride ions, and that um, helps the F minus to, well, the F minus helps it to cross the blood brain barrier. Um, and things that get across the blood brain barrier then have more access to your brain cells, to your neurons. Uh, they're both toxic to the brain. F minus is toxic to the brain as well. And AL oh, seems to help other toxic ions enter the brain as well, including lead and arsenic, HG and MN. Um, Glyphosate, which is uh, often sprayed on processed food like GMO soy, appears to form complexes with aluminum and increase its entry into the brain, according to Stephanie Seneff. Uh, these are the page numbers of her book, Toxic Legacy. She's got a bunch of online lectures as well about glyphosate, which is another neurotoxin, excitotoxin. So this is another reason why I recommend to only eat organic if you have a choice, especially uh, anything that you think might have glyphosate on it. Um, Oh, one guy who's interesting is this Jack Del Torre guy. He's a guy who wrote the book Alzheimer's Turning Point, and he thinks that aluminum is not the cause of Alzheimer's. But he, of course, he's super uh, biased because he wants to promote his theory, which I understand. And his theory, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great one. And I do think aluminum contributes to dementia. It's just not the main cause. It's just one of many causes. Okay. Um, and there's a little bit of turf issue. You know, this scientist is always promoting problems related to aluminum, and that's what he does for a living. So he's going to promote, you know, what his thing is. Um, and then you talk about autism. You know, I just mentioned the whole book and stuff about uh, Catherine Reed, PhD, who cured her daughter of autism by removing MSG. But there's a lot of other things that contribute to MSG besides, I mean, contribute to autism beside MSG. Um, AL also accumulates in the pineal gland, which doesn't have a blood-brain barrier. And uh, this can, over time, potentially contribute to decreased ability to sleep. 
It also uh, increases the risk of uh, infertility in both men and women and lower sperm counts. So that's one of the main things you'll notice. I don't think it's a coincidence. Lots of things in the common diet and processed food contribute to infertility, and they all add up. The atrazine estrogenic uh, sprayed on the corn, the high fructose corn syrup. Um, the whole glyphosate fluoride thing, um, you know, the non-organic food, and now the aluminum as well. It goes on and on. And then you think about it, a poor baby drinking uh, formula out of an aluminum can uh, with BPA lining, okay, that's also toxic to mitochondria. Um, and then they, you know, let's say there's F minus of the water to reconstitute it, and it's sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, poor kid, you know. It's hard enough, you know, when you got everybody helping you compared to when you got all these problems to grow up and have everything go well. Um, aluminum also contributes to leaky gut, so it's going to increase the risk of autoimmune disease. It also increases blood brain barrier permeability, so it increases the risk of cognitive impairment. Um, it's associated with causing more inflammation. Um, it can potentially increase the risk of developing intracellular increased amounts of peroxynitrite ONOO, like ONO, part of the NOONO -no pathway. Increases the risk of diabetes because it's toxic to beta cells, can cause beta cell necrosis. Um, can be toxic to lungs, increase the risk of uh, pulmonary fibrosis with inhalation. So again, you know, the air pollution of it, the trails and whatnot, they're not good for your lungs. It can have a bit of an immunosuppression effect. Um, it increases the risk of hypertension. Let's see, what else? Anything interesting here? Excreted from our body in sweat, so it's good to exercise. You get a little bit out of your body. It's excreted somewhat in sperm. So there's a scientific reason to encourage spanking the monkey. Um, best way to measure bodily levels is a 24-hour collection in urine. This guy is sort of like the world expert on the subject. Um, It also is in the senile plaques, and what his conclusion was is that it contributes to redox cycling, where it cycles back and forth between Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus, and in the process, giving off electrons that can cause oxidative stress and can lead to, you know, lipid peroxidation and those sort of chain reactions. There's even a type of cell death called, well, that's primarily with, um, I'm not going to go into all that, but anyways, this guy did a bunch of research on autopsies, and he felt that there was significantly increased AL in the brains of demented patients, which he called Alzheimer type dementia, and in the brains of multiple sclerosis patients, and he thinks that it's related to that. Okay, here's his book, and this is really the best book on this particular subject on AL. So if you're interested in AL, this is the book uh, that you'll find most helpful. Okay, and that's his nickname. There's other good videos on there. There's a real good video on there at VegSource about AL. Uh, Dr. McDougall has good lecture on AL. And they both talk about all the papers showing that it's neurotoxic. And it is. Okay. Um, okay, so here's some papers on it that are a little bit interesting. AL causes leaky gut, which means it increases your risk of... Uh, autoimmune disease. So you don't want that, which increases your risk of uh, inflammation, increases your risk of, you know, getting LPS in your blood, postprandial endotoxemia, all that stuff you don't want. Um, okay, here's another one. Aluminum pretreatment impairs the ability of astrocytes to protect neurons from glutamate-mediated excitotoxicity. So it increases excitotoxicity, one of the most common causes of brain cell death. And that's a big deal because think about it, the typical poor, ignorant person, they're drinking something out of a can sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, okay, maybe aspartame, and the aluminum rubbing off from the inside of the can uh, is going to contribute to them while they're talking on their cell phone, also opening up blood-brain barrier permeability with that, and it's going to have MSG in it, and this is going to make them more vulnerable to the MSG toxicity. It's also a mitochondrial inhibitor. So it's bad in numerous ways. Like the closer you look at it, the more ways you'll find uh, in it that are bad. We have confirmed findings of our laboratories that astrocytes could protect from glutamate-induced death, but prior treatment with aluminum impairs this ability for the neurons to survive. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, synergism in the toxicity of uh, aluminum and HG. So HG is a very common contaminant with high fructose corn syrup. 
So you can see where I'm going with this. Not only do processed uh, foods make people fat and sick, they also make them stupid. Okay, they do cause brain damage. These are neurotoxins, all right? Aluminum is a neurotoxin. Hg is a neurotoxin, okay? They cause brain damage, okay? So you say, well, why isn't everybody demented? Well, our body has ability to detoxify these things to some extent, and low-level brain damage, you don't notice it at first, you know, the loss of a couple of neurons. You just can't remember something, okay? But that keeps on occurring. You lose more and more neurons, and eventually, you know, you're having trouble with your activities of daily living. Significant synergism in the neurotoxicity when AL and HG were added together. Great. Okay, this was an interesting book here. This lady is an internal medicine doctor in the sort of San Francisco area, and she got referred to her a demented yuppie type patient. And there's a lot of yuppie types in the San Francisco Bay Area. There used to be, at least. And um, they were trying to be healthy by eating more fish. If you ask you know, the average ignorant person, they think fish and chicken are good. Healthy substitutes for red meat. They're all terrible foods. Okay, well, I mention that because this uh, demented yuppie was eating too much fish, and she actually checked the mercury levels, and they were very high, and that hadn't been done by their other doctors who had seen the patients previously. And then she got more and more uh, demented uh, uh, patients, often these yuppie types, and it turned out they were all eating too much fish, and that's real common to eat a lot of fish in that area. And they, uh, she took them off the fish, and their mercury levels came down, and they did a lot better. It's a good book, and she goes through a whole bunch of other stuff on mercury. It's a good book. She's a smart lady. It's a good book. But yeah, you want to avoid high fructose corn syrup. You want to avoid... Um, you also want to avoid getting um, silver fillings in your teeth because those are largely HG fillings, okay? And then if you have them, you don't want to brush directly over them with your toothbrush. You can stir some of that up. You don't want to be talking with your cell phone right next to your mouth. That also can stir off a little HG from your dental fillings, okay? And that's why I would I have some. I don't chew uh, hard stuff directly over them like carrots, for example, for that reason. And by the way, she found hundreds of patients that had that problem. Yeah, fish is a terrible food. And you'll still see a lot of phonies telling people that uh, fish is a good food or even a good brain food. She actually calls brain fog from eating fish. She calls it fish fog. She had hundreds of patients with that problem. Okay, this lady wrote a good book here. This is uh, Renee Dufault. Let me see if I can get her name up in there. Here you go. And she actually, you know, quit her regular job because she was so concerned about the high amounts of uh, HG in um, high fructose corn syrup and in all the processed food. Um, and she was amazed. You know, the chloralkali companies keep talking about how they're missing so many tons of HG. Well, why are they missing tons of mercury? Because it's getting, going into food as a contaminant is what she believes. Um, so I thought that was rather shocking like a super common uh, sweetener of food, high fructose corn syrup. And I can also tell you, you guys need to get over this idea. Anybody who thinks that science is real and legitimate and medicine is real and le legitimate, it's not, I can tell you. A friend of a friend told me that his friend was, you know, a PhD postdoc, and he wrote a paper showing that high fructose con uh, corn syrup routinely contained significant levels of HG, mercury, and he got fired for publishing that. And that's pretty typical in the modern health world, okay? Anybody who sort of speaks up and tries to help the proles will often get fired or blocked or censored in some way. The, the higher you go up in the health system, they don't even just feel indifferent to the proles. They hate them, okay? And, um, you know, they want to take all their money, of course, but <laughs> believe me, there's no one watching out for the proles. So for proles, like I'm a, just a highly educated pro, you know, you got to learn about these things so you can protect yourself from all this nonsense. And to make it simple, just, you know, live like Adam and Eve, um, but keep your indoor heating and plumbing. Oh, by the way, lots of these food dyes have HG in them. Here's a couple of them. Or some of them have arsenic or lead in them. That's another reason why you don't you want to get organic food, whole food, without all this processing stuff. It's always bad. It's no, there's nothing good about these modern chemicals. For we're not made to eat that stuff. Okay, here's a paper. Yeah, HG from this is a paper by Renee Dufault. Oh, and she she partnered with this other lady, Jane Hightower, who wrote the paper about mercury. 
So HG from chloralkali plants measured in food products and sugar, like, yeah, and high fructose corn syrup, and how common it is. They used to advertise high fructose corn syrup as a preservative, and they wouldn't tell you, though, the reason it's a preservative is because it's contaminated with HG. HG is also a mitochondrial inhibitor, which is bad for health, okay? Um, this guy's book is pretty good here. It's called um, Food Forensics, and he has a, a lab test uh, machine where he can precisely, you know, measure the individual amounts of different contaminants, how much lead is in a given food. For example, that's another reason why I won't drink tea. Tea is routinely contaminated with toxic things. I would never drink it. I think tea is for chumps. All this stuff about how healthy tea is, that's just advertising to trick all the chumps. Okay. Um, Oh, then here's the new thing that they're spraying on food. They're especially spraying it on avocados, but it's also being sprayed on apples, and there's talk of it being sprayed on a lot of other things. <clears throat> I can tell you, here's how it's spelled, AP, and then I'm not going to say it all out loud, but you'll be amazed if you look at the chem sheets on what's allowed in that. They're beyond belief. A whole bunch of neurotoxins, and then I think methyl cyanide or something. It's bad. I would never eat an avocado again in my life. I would never eat guacamole ever again in my life. <clears throat> um, it's listed as a fungal inhibitor. A lot of times fungal inhibitors are mitochondria inhibitors, which are bad. All these things, neurotoxic, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Some companies say they'll never put that in their foods, like natural grocers say that. They, they put it in writing, which I like about them. Other companies will say they don't ever use it, but they will not put it in writing on their website. You know, like Trader Joe's is like that. I've seen it. Um, I've seen their employees say it, but they won't put it in writing. Um, <clears throat> so, anyways, here's just a list of some important chemicals to know about. You know, AL. We talked about that in some detail. HG, especially from fish and from dental fillings, and in high fructose corn syrup. PB, you know, in a perfect world you'd grow your own food, but it's not that easy to do. Most of us don't have the time, the money, or the land. Cadmium comes off brake pads, so I won't ever eat at a sidewalk cafe where there's a bunch of cars going by. F minus in the water. You want to get that out of your water like with reverse osmosis. Distillation is a little bit of a problem. Even reverse osmosis can be a bit of a problem with hyperosmolarity. The newer ion exchange ones, you might want to look into that. I don't have experience with those yet. We talked about uh, MFG and glutamate um, in a recent lecture. And the book review I did on that, Fat, Stressed, and Sick by Catherine Reed, uh, goes into a lot of detail on that. Uh, here's just some more common uh, chemical for processing soy. Soy is for chumps. Soy is to sterilize low IQ proles. Uh, toluene is a neurotoxin, TCE. Um, all the mitochondria inhibitors are, are bad for brain health, circ inhibitors as well. Uh, so anyways, these are just some more things. And, you know, all these estrogenic chemicals <clears throat> making people fat and sick, increasing the risk of autoimmune disease, increasing infertility. And I'm telling you, it's not a coincidence. I, I gave previous lectures on the subject. The processed food uh, setup is designed to make people fat, sick, stupid, and infertile, and easy to control. Okay, anyways, that's it for this chapter. I hope that was helpful.